Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's stand together and sing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Well, that was good. I think we've had the screen so long we can't remember how to use a hymn book anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone, and I want to warmly welcome you to our Easter Sunday celebration of worship. Especially welcome to you if you are visiting in town with family or if you're in town for a while and just thought you might come to church this morning to celebrate Easter. Uh, it's, it's good to have you here with us. You're very welcome to join us after the service. We always have a time of coffee and refreshments in the hall directly behind the sanctuary. And, uh, and then there's always things to information stuff going on while you're back there to check out. Amongst them, Proclamation is coming up. Proclamation is where area churches get together and over a period of 10-ish days read through the entire Bible out loud. And um, uh, different churches take blocks of time and to read different sections of the Bible. So if you're willing to read out loud some, some sections of Scripture, then when you're in 
having coffee, you can sign up with Shirley Avery or Jean Smith. I can't remember where you sit, Jean, if you're here. Okay. Anyway, so you can sign up, or um, you can sign up to to read. Please mark your calendars for May 29th. We have an auction here at the church on May 29th, uh, and this is open to everyone. It's open to the, the public, so please invite your neighbors to come along for that. It's called a time and talent auction because the items in it are uh, things like offering, um, well, somebody phoned the church this week to find out if anyone was going to be offering gardening. So there you go. If somebody wants to offer some gardening time, there are people out there wanting to get that, or dinners, or boat rides, that kind of thing. So, uh, so mark your calendars and think about what you might like to offer in the time and talent auction. Thank you to Muriel for setting up our beautiful flowers this morning, which have been placed in memory and in honor of uh, many people on the, on the list that you perhaps received on your way in. We, our tradition is that after the service, these get delivered to shut-ins and to people who've had a, a loss or, or some difficult event in the last little while. So if you're able to help us deliver a flower, please come down at the end of the service and we will gladly give you a flower to deliver to someone uh, who needs a little bit of a lift on, on Easter morning. This evening we have our Easter Celebrate Life service and Tom Burton is going to be speaking and the title of his message is May I Have This Dance. One last little announcement. Um, uh, our different committees have taken on outreach challenges and our our Ministry and Personnel Committee is going to be serving lunch at the YMCA this Wednesday. So come on out. I'm sure it'll be an awesome lunch, and that's in support of their Strong Kids program. This is the way our church is getting out into the community and making a difference. Let's gather our hearts. Let's uh, quieten our hearts and begin with a time of prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this day, for this Easter Sunday. We pray, O oh God, that you, as you came to life so many years ago, that you would come to life today in our hearts. And so you would bring each one of us to life. We give you thanks for this service of worship. Help us to praise you, O oh God, and help us to reach in and to reach out. With love and with life, we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to invite kids to come down to the front for our children's time. Come on down. Must have some kids here today. Hmm? Oh, yes. My, no? My light is... Oh, oh, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. My light is on. All right. Um... This is Easter, so don't mind that. The, the organ takes a little fit now and then and does that thing. <laughs> Wants more attention. This is Easter Sunday, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did everybody have some goodies, candies and stuff? Yeah, yeah. You brought it, okay. Um, does everybody here like chocolate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you like chocolate e Easter eggs and chocolate bunnies and chocolate whatevers? Chocolate. <laughs> now, let me ask you, have you ever had pure chocolate? You have? Now, pure chocolate is chocolate with no sugar. Have you ever had chocolate with no sugar? You just happens to have some? Rise cocoa. Hmm? It smells like chocolate. Does it smell like chocolate? Wanna smell it? Hmm? Smell like chocolate? Yeah? Okay. And it tastes like chocolate, only it tastes like chocolate without sugar. Now, would anybody like to try a little bit? You put it on your you put it on your hand I'll put it on your hand and, and you lick it off. So you don't have too much, okay? Who wants to try it? Okay, now turn your hand flat so it doesn't fall off. Mm. All right, 
There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, we can't see you. Come on up here before you take it. Oh, too late. Very tentative. She's going. What is it? Too plain. Too plain. Would anybody else like to try it? Stand up here so we can see you, though. Okay. All right. Move it there. Oop. Okay, that's quite a bit. Chalky. Chalky. <laughs> Ooh, a little bitter. Um, if you don't want it, put it in here. <laughs> Anybody else want to try it? You want to try it? I mean, it's not bad. It's just not terrific. Anybody else? Who, 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 who wants to try it? Who wants to try it? You want to try it? Okay. Well, stand up here so we can see you. I didn't, did, did you like it? Uh-huh. Did it taste good? Uh-huh. Oh, you're pretty good then. <laughs> well, turn, 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 turn that way. Okay. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Okay, you can throw it in my <laughs> tissue. <laughs> Anybody else like to try it? This, no, this is chocolate with no sugar. This is good chocolate, too. Would you like to have some of this kind of chocolate on Easter morning in your bunnies and chocolate Easter eggs? Hmm? It's good in hot chocolate, but you still have to put the sugar in and this milk and stuff. Can't make it stop, eh? Oh, well. That's it? Well, here's the thing. Give it a... <laughs> here's the thing. Chocolate without sugar is pretty bitter, and that's an awful lot like life. Life without God can be really bitter. Easter, we have Jesus. Okay, I'll speak louder. <laughs> On Easter, Jesus came, and he is the sweetness of life. That's why before we were not supposed to eat any candies or sweets or chocolates. And then on Easter, we get all these goodies to remind us of how sweet life can be. It can be bitter, but with Jesus, it's very sweet. Before I say a prayer, would anybody like a real good chocolate? <laughs> da, 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 da. I just happen to have some. Robin's eggs. Mmm. Put out your hand. Hmm? They're not fake. Whoops, they're good candies. Oh, you don't trust me. Okay, he doesn't trust me. <laughs> well, you, you, you tested, so you get two. You want one? No, thank you. You guys don't trust me. Anybody? No? no? Well, they're good ones. They are. They are. They are pretty good ones. No, no, don't trust me. Well, I can't blame you. After church, do you want to try one? After church, if you'd like to, you can come. And I, I assure you that they're good. They have sugar. <laughs> you make you say, mmm, instead of, ah. Let's say a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For Easter. For Easter. And for Jesus. And for Jesus. Who makes life sweet. Amen. Amen. Now, who knows the question? Well, we only have one hand. Right there. <laughs> who, Father? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Easter story. The Easter story as it is found in John chapter 20. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Shalom, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Shalom, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In this reading, we hear God's voice. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen.
ever hope to be. churches down in Centene Park to watch the Easter sunrise and after the sunrise service we took all of the prayer requests that have been put on our prayer board and in the basket over here over this last year down to the river and after praying and offering them up to God we burnt them there and uh, we start anew. So the prayer board is across from my office just through these doors Please feel free to, uh, if your prayer hasn't been answered yet, to write it again and put it up there and to offer our prayers to God. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we do thank you for coming into this place this morning to worship you. We thank you for the many gifts that you have given us. We thank you for the beauty of the morning down by the river. And just the opportunity to give thanks for the promise that Easter holds for each one of us and the hope that it holds for each one of us. We pray this morning, Lord, for all of the churches in our community and for all those gathered around the world who do gather together in unity to praise you. We pray this morning for the many volunteers that we have in this church we think especially today of those who have assisted in any way with the Lenten services that have been held, as well as for the community dinner yesterday. And we thank you for the opportunity to have served yesterday in this community and to brought your love to others. Lord, we are part of a big family, and we just think of those around the world who are suffering at this time. We think of countries like the Ukraine or the Central African Republic or the Congo, places in the Middle East. There are so many where turmoil seems to reign. We just pray for the leaders of these countries to think of their people and to put their people first and their people's welfare. We pray for those who go to try and assist in lands that are not their own to try and bring your hope. And Lord, within our own country, we just think of the many concerns that we have. We think of First Nations communities that are suffering so much. And we think of just so many challenges that people are having to face. For those here today who may be looking for a job or just trying to make ends meet. For those who are concerned about a loved one. For those who just bring a burden here today, we place them all at the foot of the cross and we rejoice at the empty tomb, knowing that you hear our prayers. And so as a family, Lord, we just are so thankful to be able to gather here and to offer our prayers and our praise to you. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you. sound of hearts returning to you, return to you, in your kingdom broken lives are made new, you make us new. Day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Because when we see you in find strength to face the day, in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna,
Thank you, choir. Thank you. So last week I came across an article um, on the net, uh, but from the Edmonton Journal, that apparently Edmonton has been ranked the third best city to live in if you want to survive a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> St. John's, Newfoundland is the number one city to, to live in. Have we got some newfies in the crowd? Oh, well, I guess you guys have been there, haven't you? I, I, I think it's because it's an island and they figure that the zombies would have to swim or something to get to them. I, I don't know, avoid the icebergs. Um, uh, Ottawa came in ninth place. Brockville didn't make the list. <laughs> I know, I'm just as disappointed as you are. Just think of the number of people who would be flocking to Brockville if we'd made the top 10. I mean, our economic woes would be over. Well, as some of you probably know, or maybe don't know, zombies have become pretty popular in, in popular culture over the last decade or two. Um, a zombie apocalypse is when the, undi uh, the undead rise up and take over the world. And that's a little bit scary because there are way more dead people than living people, so we'd be sort of outnumbered. And um, Edmonton got ranked third place, I think, because it's so cold, and they figure that the zombies would be sort of stiff in the cold or something like that. And there's a military base close by. It's a joke for most of us. There are some people who take this stuff seriously. Um, and, uh, but I can't help but wondering why things like this sort of uh, become popular. And uh, I have two theories. Um, my, my two theories, I, I think that people have a sense in our culture that we're not really living. That we're already zombies now. Uh, you know, we, our, our lives just get filled with work and errands and, uh, you know, the French have an expression, métro, boulot, dodo, commute, work, sleep. That's it. That, that's, that's life. Um, and it seems today, it seems that there's so much less time to really richly enjoy life, to connect with family, to, to deepen faith, to do things that make life, uh, you know, to sing and uh, relish in the arts, to do things that make life rich and wonderful and full, full of life. Uh, it seems like we live in a world where we're really walking around like zombies. The other thing, the other reason I think that the zombie thing is, is prominent is that we have a, an undercurrent of fear and anxiety in our culture. And it seems like it's growing. I don't know if it's any different from a few, you know, generations ago going through World War II, or I don't know if our anxiety levels are higher, but they seem like they're getting higher. Uh, from the terrorist attacks 
over a decade ago, or uh, just rising threats, things like uh, cancer that just seems to, to, to continue to take people and a cure continues to elude us. There are all sorts of reasons, but it feels, our lives feel a little bit out of control, and there's a general sense of fear and anxiety that is, that is building. And a zombie apocalypse is the ultimate fear of death taking over life. And not death in a good rest in peace kind of way, but in, in an eternal no life, no rest, no uh, state. Well, it was no different in Jesus' time. Okay, it was a little different. I, I don't think they were worried about zombies back then. I don't actually recall zombies coming up in the Bible. But then it always amazes me what you find when you actually read the Bible. I posted earlier this week that I was reading uh, the Bible and uh, my four-year-old Maisie said, read the part about the three little pigs. <laughs> and I said, I don't remember where that is in the Bible. So she said, I'll find it, grabbed my Bible, flipped through some pages, and pr proudly started reading, little pig, little pig, let me in. I figure she must have found it somewhere in Chronicles or the Minor Prophets, you know, where you don't spend that much time too often. But there certainly was fear and anxiety and unrest in Jesus' time, if there weren't fears of zombies. Uh, their unrest and fear came because they lived in an occupied land. The Romans had occupied their state they were still allowed to live somewhat normal lives, but they had no control. There was always a, an anxiety about the Romans. Last Sunday, we celebrated Palm Sunday when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, and the whole city was stirred up when Jesus came in, and crowds began to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And many in the crowd thought that Jesus would become this leader, that Jesus would lead them to victory, that Jesus would lead them to conquer the Romans. They were sure that Jesus was the answer to all their problems. And that's the irony, because of course, he was, and he is the answer. But the crowds thought that Jesus would lead them in a revolution, and they were ready to get behind him. I don't know what his chances would have been, but they were ready to fight. They would have gotten behind him if he had led them that way. They were ready, and they, want, they saw this life force. They saw this treasure in Jesus, and they wanted him to lead them to a public victory so that the entire world could see what they could see in this leader, in this man. So what ended up happening made no sense. It more than caught them off guard. It, it knocked them to the ground. It, it knocked the wind out of them so violently that they weren't sure they were ever going to breathe again. Have you ever had the wind knocked out of you? Maybe not physically but by some event in life that you just had no control over, that just sent you to the ground. I'm guessing at certain, some point in your life you had. Jesus' disciples, instead of seeing a public rise to victory, the events changed dramatically and very quickly. And instead, what they got was a very dramatic and public arrest, trial, torture, and execution of the one that they loved. Instead of a public victory, what they witnessed was an epic public failure and defeat. But we've gathered here today because it did not end in defeat. We have gathered here today to celebrate the victory of Easter. The victory was so much larger than any revolution over the Romans 
could have, could have made happen. I mean, if that had happened, it would have been temporary. Some of you might know about it from your history, but most of us would have forgotten about it. It would be in some dis dusty history book. Some other leader would have eventually taken over. No, that's not the victory that happened. Here's something that I want you to notice. Though the defeat was public, the resurrection, the victory, was quiet and private. Only a few witnessed it. It was the women who witnessed it first. Nobody's. The resurrection started small, but then it grew, and it grew. Never underestimate the power in small things, especially if those small things are put into the hands of God. There can be power in the small and in the fragile. Just look in the manger at that newborn baby. Okay, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to clench your fist. Come on, put some muscle into it. Clench your fist. Okay, you're clenching? You're working hard? Getting your workout? Okay, now stop clenching. What's changed? Absolutely nothing, from my point of view anyway. It still looks the same. Okay, the pressure is off, right? The pressure is off, but your fist is still closed. You know, it's a little bit like when you squeeze your hand, it's like when you're going through a crisis or a very difficult time, right? And when that pressure comes off, when, when, when whatever is sort of that, the crisis point is off, it eases up. But you still look the way you did before. If you want things to change, you have to do something. You have to make an effort and open your hand. We desperately want problems to stop and to go away. But even when the problems go away, we tend to walk around looking like the closed fist. We walk around like the undead, and we're called to open our hands. April is the cruelest month. That's the opening line of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow. For Eliot, April is the cruelest month because it was a month of resurrection. He saw the flowers and the trees and all of creation asleep, not living in the forgetfulness of winter. And April disturbs that rest. Like a, like a jarring alarm clock, the April sun and the rain call creation to wake up, to grow, and to live. I can imagine that it would be a whole lot easier it would be a whole lot safer for a bulb to stay buried under the ground than it would to, to push down roots and to, to, to push up shoots, especially when you go through all that effort and the shoots come up only to, to meet snow. I mean, why take the risk? Why endure the, the, the cold and the pain why, why, why risk the tyranny of the squirrels and the marking dogs? Why? Because a tulip was created to bloom, and it will bloom no matter what the risks are. The defeats of life are often very public. But God does offer you victory. 
Most of the time, though, it comes quietly and gradually. That's God's way. If you look all through the scriptures, you'll see it. You'll see that God begins in small ways. And if you let it, it will grow and grow. Think of the drought in the times of the prophet Elijah. He prayed for rain and he sent his servant out to look to the sea to see if he could see any sign of rain. And the servant came back and said, nothing. And Elijah sent him out again and again. And finally the servant came back and said, well, there is a cloud, but it's, it's the size of your fist. And most people, even in a drought, if they looked and saw a cloud the size of a fist, would think, well, that's not going to do any good. But Elijah knew that that's the way God works. Elijah knew that that was the promise of God, and so he sent the servant to the king to warn him to get into his chariots and start moving before the rain, rain, and more rain came to clog down and muddy the path. Coming back to life seems like a pretty dramatic event for us. But only a few witnessed it that first day. And even when they witnessed it, the disciples huddled in, terro in terror in an upper room for fear. Their fists were still closed, though the horror of the few days before was over. But Jesus breathed on them and called them to life to live, to wake up. Martin Luther King Jr. used to tell a story of Sister Pollard, a 70-year-old African-American woman. She was living in Montgomery, Alabama during the now famous bus boycott. And one day after walking significant distances daily for months, Sister Pollard was asked if she would like to a ride. When she answered no, the person said to her, but aren't you tired? To which Sister Pollard answered, my feet is tired, but my soul is rested. Christ is calling you to come to life. Don't be discouraged if it's not dramatic. It will probably look a little more like a tiny cloud on the horizon, or a, a, like a tiny bulb, or even a seed of a sunflower. But don't give up believing in the promise. If life has been difficult for you, if there's been something that you're praying for, do not give up on the promise God has for you. I don't think a zombie apocalypse is a, is a future threat. I think it's a present threat. We so often are walking around showing so little signs of life, or the life that we do show looks like fear and anxiety. Jesus has come to set us free from our fears and to bring us back to life. Jesus came to defeat the zombie apocalypse but it's not going to look dramatic. It's not going to look like running to an army base to arm ourselves. It won't be dramatic in public. It will come quietly. It will start small. It will start small like hearing your name being called. Mary. John. Heather. David. Christ is calling you to wake up. Wake up. Will you respond? Will you let him into your heart and so come alive? God is making a way where there seems to be no way. Resurrection, pro resurrection living means holding on to a promise. It means new life is unfolding. That doesn't mean there won't be struggles and challenges along the way. Our feet will be tired. But when we open ourselves up to resurrection living, our souls will be rested and will be filled with life. 
so much life that we can't help but give it away. There is no tragedy that God cannot redeem. There is no dream, no God-given dream that Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life cannot energize and advance. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. risen Let's stand and sing out for our faith. one of us. So let us go from this place and be people of the resurrection. Let us go from this place filled with the life of Christ and offering it to a zombie world. Let us bring life and beauty 
to our world as we were created to do. And may the blessings of God, the source of life of Christ Jesus, the life incarnate, and the Holy Spirit life's power go with you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Grab a hand or a shoulder as we sing, Go Now in Peace. Oh my God.